agents are at your service. This is the best portable console you can buy and is flying under everyone's radar. This is DSi, a Nintendo DS with slightly bigger screen, better performance, and a camera. Though I doubt anyone would actually use this camera nowadays. Launched with Nintendo DSiWare, a predecessor to the eShop, it offered downloadable contents straight to your handheld. Of course, this doesn't mean anything since those services have shut down. So why should you buy this other than the fact that it's extremely easy to mod this console? Let's get straight into pricing. Compared to DS Lite and 2DS, it's fairly neck and neck with each other. This will also depend on your region. You may be able to find DSi cheaper and vice versa. You can also get a 2DS if you spend a couple dollars more. So how is a DSi a good deal? It all comes down to age and condition. The original DS and DS Lite came out in 2004 and 2006. The DSi came out in 2008. Because the DSi lost the GBA cartridge compatibility and its exclusive game lineup being mediocre at best, people People had no real reason to upgrade. So there are more stocks of DS Lights available compared to DSi, but the demand for DS Lite is higher due to the aforementioned GBA compatibility, which results in more DSi's in good condition out in the market compared to DS Lite. DSi is also built better, which I'll explain later in the video. Oh, and one more thing. DSi is the first Nintendo console to receive the XL treatment. It is the cheapest XL console you can buy. You could get lucky with your bidding and get a 3DS XL for cheaper, but the average price is cheaper for the DSi XL. DS and DS Lite can play GBA and DS games. DSi can play DS games, with some games taking advantage of extra horsepower and DSiWare. 3DS can play everything DS can, plus more. Obviously, if you want variety, go for 3DS, but if you're serious about DS games, DSi, especially DSi XL, is no joke. Playing DS games on 3DS is fine, but playing it on DSi XL is marvelous. Due to DS games running at lower resolution than the 3DS screen, it either stretches the image resulting in blurry mess, or shrinks it to accurately portray the game whilst sacrificing screen real estate. DSi has no such issue. This is a side-by-side -side shot of the same game running on a 3DS XL and DSi XL. Need I say more? The clarity gained from running at its intended resolution screen is phenomenal. Also, look at how much screen real estate you lose by running it at native resolution on a 3DS. The issue is amplified when using the regular sized console. I like all consoles I own, and while making these videos, I rarely talk about the negative aspects of each device, since that's not what the video is about. So. Here's something I didn't mention in my 3DS video. You see this gap? This is the bane of my existence. I believe the reason for this is to round the edges to make it more comfortable when holding, but it results in dust and other objects getting in between. Imagine putting a DS Lite, DSi, or 3DS in your pocket. Which one would you feel the most comfortable with? 3DS has that annoying gap. DS Lite shuts flush, but it's a fragile device. DSi closes up with no gap, and in my opinion, it has an overall nicer build quality. It's sleek and modern. Even compared to devices today, it holds up. It does wobble a bit, but apparently this was done to avoid the hinge cracking that is prone to DS Lite. DS Lite is also more prone to yellowing, which you can come across when you look for the white model. Nintendo did fix the hinge issue with 3DS, which doesn't suffer from cracking and it has minimal wobble. If you, like many, plan on putting on a clear case or a protective carrying case, this is no issue at all. But if you're like me and need a device you can chuck it in your pocket or a bag and whip it out in your downtime ASAP without worrying too much about dust getting in, DSi is the only choice. Unless you go for a Game Boy Advance SP. That's it for now. Bye.